One of the pieces that I'm going to perform this Sunday is the suite from my childhood, in which Bortkevich, in his own words, so to speak, tells us about his childhood in Kharkiv. Uh, and the very first piece from the cycle is called What My Nanny Sang, and it is uh, basically uh, an arrangement of a Ukrainian folk song Vyut Vitre, a very popular folk song that I'm sure many of you are familiar with. Now, what I'd like to do is just tell you that a little bit of a dilemma in the 20th century is in the fact that 20th century two currents separated, what we would call the traditional current, and the other one it would be the, the current that is the modernist. And this goes on to the present day. It's um, no longer a war like it used to be. It's just acceptance of the fact that polystylistics is, 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 in, is in fact lives. I think the best answer to that as to why that was, there is a wonderful uh, Russian composer named Alfred Schnitke, and somebody asked him, well, what is contemporary music? And his reply was, Monteverdi, Schütz, Bach, Handel, Mozart, Beethoven, Schumann, Brahms, Verdi, Wagner, Debussy, Ravel, Schoenberg, etc., etc., Stravinsky, etc. They say, what, what are you talking about? Well, it's music that's being played now. Because it's being played now, it is contemporary. So you have to make a distinction between what is contemporary and the other things like Modernism, like serialism, like polytonality, etc. So I think, in that sense, as we are approaching now, we're going into the third decade of the 21st century, uh, one must then look upon music as something that is naturally polystylistic by now because it's historical. History now plays a big part. I'd just like to leave a little bit what, in an interview, he wrote. He said, this was written down, this was in 1948, after the war. I have often been called an epigone of Tchaikovsky, but that is not correct. I certainly create music in the atmosphere of Tchaikovsky and may well count myself among the romantics but I have retained my personal character. Today, one is probably inclined to dismiss all melodicists as epigones, certainly very often wrongly, especially as far as I am concerned. Romanticism is not the bloodless intellectual commitment to a program, but expression of my most profound mind and soul. And I think that tells you about who he is. And this was the fight that existed, which was which is a primarily in the beginning of the 20th century into the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, has kind of disappeared. But Richard Strauss, who remained a traditionalist, went to a concert where the new piece of Paul Hindemith was performed. And afterwards, and Hindemith was one of the early modernists in Germany. He approached Paul Hindemith and said, why do you write like that? You're talented. Which I thought was a funny remark. And it sort of shows that division that was going on. 
Okay, and that's nothing particularly new. That was also true in the 19th century, when you had the Wagnerians versus the Brahmsians. So, I think it's time for us to reevaluate the music of these neo-romantics that worked in the 20th century, and if this is really beginning. And Burkevich now is being recorded a lot. He's got over a dozen recordings out, professional made recordings. And if you go to the YouTube, you can hear a lot. So, what, will you, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that subject? I think that was an amazing quote uh, from, from him. And uh, uh, he, he is a lot criticized often for uh, kind of borrowing um, elements of other composers' styles. And some, when I was doing my, my recording, my sound engineer kept turning on the microphone saying, wait, that sounds exactly like uh, this uh, list piece. And this sounds like the scrapping piece. And uh, there is there is definitely some truth to that. But uh, I, I just think for him, that was his uh, that was his language. That was what he was used to. He was a great pianist. He played all those great composers. And that's how he was uh, thinking. So that's how he, you know, what what how he was living. Uh, that's the language he was speaking in his music, and uh, that's, that's what he says, right, in this quote. And uh, I think there are always um, different types of composers, ones who try to create something new to break the rules, like, let's say, Beethoven, right, like to be a revolutionary. And then there is another one who kind of sums up what was before. He used everything he could, he heard everything he loved from the previous music, and he creates his uh, his own music, and that's how how it was with Borkevich. So yes, his music really sounds like the 19th century music, and you can definitely hear all these influences, a whole spectrum of those, because he was a cosmopolitan. He, you know, he lived all over the place in Europe. Uh, he lived in Kharkiv, and he lived in St. Petersburg for three years, and he lived in Vienna and in Berlin, and he spent some time in Constantinople, and Belgrade, and Sofia. He lived all over the place, and that's also what you can hear in his music, because sometimes you hear the Russian romantic uh, elements. Sometimes you have Ukrainian folk melodies. Sometimes you hear Mendelssohn or Schubert or Liszt. So that's that's just his style, and is I think it, go, it goes in a perfect harmony with his life. Okay, good answer. Um, so we're going to hear another piece now. Okay. And Pablo uh, will introduce it. Let's hear it. And here is one of Borkevich's early works. It's called The Midnight, and it's very much inspired by the German romantic composers, in particular by Robert Schumann. I hope you can join me this Sunday at 2 o'clock New York time for my concert from the Ukrainian Institute where I'll play a lot of piano works by Sergei Bortkevich and also talk about his life and his music. Thank you, Pavlo, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for giving us your time 
and following this end of this video you will see some information placed for you to look at write down that all the other information that you need to be able to join us on this stream thank you very much have a good year